So I recently switched over to Pulse Audio, so today I'm going to show you how to actually do this, and also some of the things you would actually keep in mind. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do, and let's jump right into it. So if all you want to do is switch over to Pulse Audio and you don't want to have any of the other extensions to it, it's a very simple process, you really don't even need a video for it. All you have to do, so bring up a terminal, go into your package manager or use your package manager to download Pulse Audio. And once you've done this, give me one sec, there we go, just let that download. And now you have Pulse Audio installed. Now do a reboot and then everything should be working just fine. So obviously if that's all I wanted to talk about, I wouldn't do a video on this. So one thing you do need to keep in mind is that when you do switch over to Pulse Audio, you're not actually getting rid of Ulcer. So Ulcer is still doing a lot of stuff in the background and Pulse actually does a lot of its work through Ulcer because Ulcer is actually a kernel module. So Pulse is sort of a layer on top of Ulcer. So if you don't know what Pulse Audio is whatsoever, basically it's another sort of audio sound system for Linux that's considerably easier to configure than Ulcer. You can do a lot of the stuff that you do with Pulse directly in Ulcer. There's stuff you can't do, obviously, but a lot of it you can do. It's just way harder to configure. Pulse Audio is designed to be much easier and there's also a lot of programs that are being developed with Pulse Audio in mind now. And this is one of the main reasons that I actually switched over. There's two things that were a hassle with Ulcer and I needed to basically switch over to Pulse to get them to work. One was OBS actually recording the output from my computer. So I know that there are ways to get it to work. You can do like loopbacks and stuff like that to actually get it to, you know, function properly. I couldn't work out how to do it though. I went and installed Pulse and it worked perfectly fine. And the other thing is with Discord and a lot of other programs like that. I think Slack might be the same way. So I actually had to run a program called Apulse, which is basically a compatibility layer from Ulcer to Pulse because Discord is a program with, written with Pulse in mind. So I wasn't able to do things like select my microphone. So running through Apulse, you only have the option of running your default microphone. So then if I wanted to switch from my laptop to my Blue Yeti that I've got over to the side here, I would then have to actually change the default microphone within the Ulcer configuration. I had literally no idea how to do that and I couldn't work out through the documentation how to do it. I couldn't find anything on like Stack Overflow or any of the forums like that on how to do it. So you know what? It's much easier just to use Pulse and get it to work as you just want it to out of the box. So now that we have Pulse Audio installed, one thing you're probably gonna notice is you don't really have a nice interface to control it. Now, you can do everything through the command line through a program called um, PACTL. So there's a man page for that. We'll just have a brief look. I'm not gonna go into that in this video because I'm gonna assume that you just want the basic setup for Pulse Audio. And most people typically use either a console interface or a graphical interface. So if you're using console interfaces, I've tried out a couple. The best one seems to be Pamixer. So I would recommend that. I'm probably gonna do a dedicated video just on Pamixer, but I'm gonna assume you want the graphical version. So for this, most people typically recommend something like Pavu Control. So there's a GTK version and there's a QT version. Now, if you don't just want a graphical interface like that. There's also a couple of system tray applets. So there's one for your microphones, there's a PA applet. I don't know how good any of these are. I haven't actually tried them, but this one actually has a volume bar on it. So maybe that one's gonna be pretty useful. But as I said, we're just gonna download Pavu Control and we're gonna download the GTK version. So basically, since I'm on Arch, all I'm gonna do is sudo pacman. It's in the main repo, so I don't need to get anything from the AUR, but I think the some of the applets were, yeah, this this one is, this one's not, the mic tray one is on the AUR. So obviously, if you want one of the AUR ones, then go through the steps to download AUR stuff, but we're not doing that today. So we'll download Pavu Control, and then let's open this one up. So Pavu. The one problem with Pavu Control, and the reason I don't typically run it, so I'm not gonna cut this, because I'm just gonna show you how ridiculously long this program takes to load up. The only other GTK app that I've seen that takes this long is probably GIMP, and I can understand that GIMP takes a while. I don't even know how long this is gonna take. I've been trying to drag this out and it's still going. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna cut this. So as soon as I stopped recording, it actually opened up. So as we can see, we have basically like our, our playback setting. So if you've noticed that it's muted and you can't hear anything, make sure that you actually unmute it with this up here and also change the volume level. 
And you might also want to change your output device and your things like this. So if I was to open up something like MPV, so I'll just open this up and mute that for a second. And as we can see, we should have something in here. There we go. So in our playback settings, we'll see what it's actually trying to output to. So as we can see, this is going to be outputting to my built-in analog audio or audio analog stereo, whatever it says. So that's my default speakers on my laptop. But maybe if you have some external speakers, it's going to try to output through those. And if you have them muted, then you won't be able to hear that, obviously. But this will also try to output through my Blue Yeti. So if you have a Blue Yeti plugged in, it, it might do that. I've noticed some things will default to that, and I don't know why. I think if I have the Blue Yeti plugged in when I boot the system, it sets it as the default device, which is annoying. But just make sure that this is set to the thing that you actually want to output sound from, and also that that device isn't actually muted. So also check in your output devices to make sure that's not muted as well. So once you've done that, then you should have audio working just fine. Now I'm not going to actually play this just in case a second of it gets me copyright struck, but you get the point. Okay, now that we have a basic setup of Pulse Audio, there's some other stuff we might want to install alongside this just to make sure we actually have everything we want working. So if we come down to, on the ISO Linux Wiki to the installation section, we can see that there's a couple of things you want to install or you might want to install alongside Pulse Audio. So one of those that I've got installed is Pulse Audio Ulsa. Now what this will do is make it so Pulse Audio is going to actually manage all of your Ulsa settings. Now what will happen if you don't do this is that what might happen is you could actually mute one of your devices in Ulsa, which will then make it so it doesn't look muted in Pulse, but it actually is. So then to fix that, you'd actually have to fix it within Ulsa, not within Pulse. Whereas if you do it like this, then pretty much everything that Ulsa handles is then taken control of by Pulse. So all of your settings will be handled directly through Pulse Audio. Now, if you're only using Pulse Audio, I would seriously recommend installing this. It's just gonna make it much easier. Now, another one that you might want to install is Pulse Audio Bluetooth. So if you use any Bluetooth headsets, you're gonna need this to actually get those to work. And there's a bunch of other steps to actually get those to work as well. I'm not gonna go into doing Bluetooth because it's a massive pain on Linux, but I would recommend also just download, if you are doing Bluetooth stuff, just download one of the graphical interfaces for it. It'll just make it easier. But yeah, anyway, I'm not going into that in this video. So there's a couple other things you might also want to install in this. I don't have any of these installed, but maybe it'll be useful for your system. There's a couple of other important things to actually mention about Pulse Audio. So on Arch, it actually has a socket enabled by default for running Pulse Audio. So this is called Pulse Audio.socket. So if after you've done a reboot, after you've installed Pulse Audio, it isn't working, make sure you actually enable this socket. So the way you go about doing this is sudo system ctl enable, then the name of the socket. So Pulse, if you can spell it correctly, Pulse Audio.socket. And then if you want to enable it right now, you just do dash dash now. So if for whatever reason, the socket isn't running by default, this is how you would go about doing this. So this will just make sure that every time you reboot your system, Pulse Audio will actually be running. So if you don't have that enabled, then you'd actually have to enable that sound system yourself. And you don't want to do that. You just want it to be handled with your boot up system basically. Now, the other thing you also want to keep in mind is with that Pulse Audio Ulsa package. So if you have an A Sound RC in your home directory, make sure you actually get rid of that when you're using Pulse Audio Ulsa. Otherwise, it's going to try to default to this instead of using the settings that that package actually installs for you. So if for whatever reason Pulse Audio Ulsa isn't working, make sure you don't have an A Sound RC that's actually overriding it. Now, if you want to use Pulse Audio with some 32-bit multi-layer applications like Wine and Steam, you also need to go ahead and actually install these two plugins. I don't personally use Wine, and I'm not much of a gamer, so I don't actually have Steam installed. But if you are, then make sure you also install these two packages. Otherwise, I think you just won't have sound at all. I haven't actually tested it, but that's what I'm going to assume is going to happen if you don't do that. So there's a bunch of other stuff in here about configuring the backend for Ulsa. And if you're having any problems, make sure you just come and look in here because it's probably already been answered. So just have a look through here. I'm not gonna go into it just because I haven't run into any of these problems. So I'm gonna assume that with the default Arch setup, it's probably gonna be fine. Maybe it's just fine on my hardware or maybe I just haven't run into any issues. Regardless, if you have those problems, just come check this out or go to like Stack Overflow. Someone's probably answered it somewhere. 
Now the last thing I wanted to mention is that some programs need you to actually explicitly enable pulse audio. So if we just go down to here, so most programs are gonna work pretty well, but if you have any problems, just come check out this section. With MPV, it worked perfectly fine out of the box, but apparently you're supposed to also do AO equals pulse, but I didn't need to, it just worked it just worked pretty much. I didn't I don't have anything else to say about that. But any programs that might be playing up, check this out and you're probably gonna work something out. So I reckon that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in this video. I'll leave a link to the Arts and Links wiki down below. So if you want to have a read through this yourself and have a look at any of the stuff that I didn't cover in here, or just if you're having any troubleshooting problems, go check this out first because it's very likely that it's probably already been answered by someone. And if it has been, don't expect me to answer it for you because I'm literally just going to point you to the wiki. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links, so my Discord and my Telegram. So feel free to check any of those out if you want to chat with me or get video updates. I've also got my support link, so if you'd like to support the channel, then I've got my Patreon and also a couple of donate links, so feel free to use any of those. But as always, if you don't want to support the channel, then you obviously don't have to, but any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platform, so my BitTube and my library. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, that's where you're going to go for that. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.